Hey guys, welcome to the Liberal Hive Mind, a channel solely focused on exposing the abundant hypocrisy of the left. When it comes to the Biden administration, I always describe it with one specific word over and over again. It continues to pop up, and that word is incompetence. It's something we see across the board when it comes to the Biden administration. Most of the time, it's associated with Biden himself, I mean, for obvious reasons, but it's not just Biden. It's the entirety of the Democrat hierarchy, and I mean presidential candidate hierarchy, which is three people. Joe Biden. Biden, Kamala Harris, and Pete Buttigieg, otherwise known as Pete Booty Butt Cheeks. These are the top three Democrats when it comes to the nomination process. When you look at any poll that's surveying Democrat likely voters and registered Democrats, the top three Democrat candidates, excluding Michelle Obama, because frankly that's unrealistic, are Joe Biden, Kamala Harris, and Pete Buttigieg. And you know, when we talk about not exactly getting the pick of the litter, especially when it comes to elected officials, politicians in general, not exactly being the smartest or most competent people, People, well, the Democrat presidential top picks are pretty much the best example that you can find. I mean, let's just do the comparison. Joe Biden. You know, the rapidly rising uh, um, uh, in with, uh, with uh, I don't know. Uh, Kamala Harris. <laughs> Pete Buttigieg versus Donald Trump, Ron DeSantis. And I guess probably next in line would be Ted Cruz, which is not my favorite politician, but the man is sharp. Ted Cruz is highly, highly competent and highly intelligent, just a little bit shady and lacks a backbone. The point is that you just can't compare the two, and this week, we have major blunder, major gaffe, one after another, from Joe Biden to Kamala Harris to Pete Buttigieg. And I guess the best way I could present this video is, folks, these are the most powerful people in the United States running the most powerful government in the world, the United States state's government, this is your leadership. Hopefully it doesn't make you too black pill. Let me show you guys what's going on here, but of course, before we get into any of it, please make sure to leave a like, a comment, subscribe, share the video as much as possible. We are still shadow banned by the YouTube algorithm hidden from non-subscribed viewers. And with that out of the way, let's roll the tape. Now, obviously for this video, folks, we're going to start off with Joe Biden. I mean, there's really no other way to do it. And let's just go right to it. Ladies and gentlemen, the 46th president of the United States of America. America is a nation that can be defined in a single word. I was in the foot him uh, foot, foot. I was going to foot him uh, foot, foot. I mean, I really don't know what to say at this point. We're so desensitized to this stuff. But the more I'm exposed to it, the more I just question myself. I mean, what is, who is a Biden supporter? How do you exist? How do you justify this decision? This is your president. This is your president of choice. This is the man you chose, you nominated, and then voted for in a general election. This guy. I was going to foot him uh, foot. foot. It's just unbelievable. Then, of course, the next day, here's another Joe Biden gaffe. We're the only outfit in the country that is immune. Imagine had the tobacco industry been immune to, prostit to, to, prostit to being sued. Come on. Again, I just don't know what to say. Your president can't pronounce words, mixes up words constantly, forgets people's names, messes up people's names on seemingly a daily basis, and also apparently falls asleep while standing up. <laughs> Now, of course, copium Democrats are saying Joe Biden's not falling asleep. He just has his eyes closed because he cares so much about the military. Pretty sure the guy's dozing off. Some people might be saying the sun's in his eyes, maybe towards the end a little bit as his eyes started to open up a little bit. But at the start, his eyes are closed shut. He's not squinting. The guy is dozing off in broad daylight during a public event, standing up, and can barely keep his hand at his brow line. This is the president of the United States of America. We go down the line second in succession, the vice president of the United States, Kamala Harris, who constantly displays, once again, utter incompetence, especially on the world stage as the White House continues to make her the face of American diplomacy. Here is her latest walking in circles word salad during her visit to Jamaica. Been presented as an issue that is economic in the way of its impact has been the pandemic. 
So to that end, we are announcing today also that we will assist Jamaica in COVID recovery um, by assisting in terms of the recovery efforts in Jamaica that have been essential to, I believe, what is necessary to strengthen not only uh, the, the, the issue of public health, but also the economy. I mean, honestly, the best comparison that I could think of in relation to what Kamala Harris just said is this. Have you ever had a dream that, that you, um, you had, you, you, you could, you do, you, you want, you, you could do so. She's going in circles and circles. Our focus is on economic recovery, which is essential to our focus on economic recovery because of the importance of economic recovery. Kind of similar to this one. Talking about the significance of the passage of time. Right, the significance of the passage of time. So when you think about it, there is great significance to the passage of time in terms of what we need to do to lay these wires, what we need to do to create these jobs. And there is such great significance to the passage of time. I mean, what is she talking about? It's pure pseudo-intellectualism. It's an outer act, a mirage, so to speak, of intellectualism and education using words in an attempt to sound educated, but just going in circles and not really making a point. The constant rambling and chasing of her own tail signals, if anything, a lack of intelligence. Intelligent people don't need 500 words to describe a very simple concept. In fact, many times the best writers and the best orators can get to the point quickly they can convey their message without rambling or running on. Kamala Harris is utterly unprepared, utterly unintelligent, totally incompetent, frankly just unqualified for the job. Here she is most recently on a serious XM radio show giving an answer to a question about Pell Grants. Pell Grants have been increased? Yeah, Pell Grants, have, have you increased Pell Grants? Um, we have definitely extended the, uh, and I, it's something that I think we need to keep doing, the, the okay. awareness about what we have to do on Pell Grants, and I can follow up with you on specifically what we've been doing, but okay. um, I can tell you that when I was in the Senate, I was definitely working on the Pell Grant issue because it, it can't be what it was when I was at Howard. <laughs> <laughs> it's not the most serious gaffe. I mean, it's not a Joe Biden gaffe. But the difference is this. Even if Joe Biden would stumble his words, probably not know what state he's in or what time it is, he'd probably be able to actually address the question itself. Kamala Harris talks for five minutes straight and you feel as though you've learnt or understood or gone nowhere. I mean, it's incredible. It's almost like a skill. She has absolutely no idea what she is talking about. She has no clue. But she goes on and on and gives these long-winded political non-answers to to everything. I don't know what she's saying half the time, or I don't get the point of her response, which is probably why Kamala Harris's deputy chief of staff just quit, becoming the 11th aide to leave the vice president's office in the mass exodus of Kamala Harris's office. But let's continue on and move down the line. Next on the list, Pete Buttigieg, who's supposedly the sharpest up-and-coming Democrats and extra points for him, he's part of a specific community. Therefore, he's basically a future Democrat hero. And that's really the joke of this whole thing. The reason Democrats are in this position with these utterly incompetent leaders is due to the fact that breaking glass ceilings and electing people that are part of particular communities or represent certain identities is apparently more important than competence. But let's not get sidetracked. Here's Pete Buttigieg trying to take down Ron DeSantis on The View and it backfires spectacularly. So-called don't say gay law now, um, which he says will kill kids. Do you agree? And, you know, as a, as a politician, because this, this strikes you as, you know, your husband is a teacher. Yeah. You are uh, obviously LGBTQ yourself, and you are now a parent. Yeah. So how do you feel about yeah, this? Yeah, he, he's right. And, and I think every law ought to be judged for the effect it's going to have on real people in real life. And I, I get the political reasons why they're doing this. By the way, some of those political reasons, is they don't have a plan on anything else, right? I mean, they, they, they don't have a plan on dealing with inflation or, or, or dealing with, <laughs> with gas prices or, or dealing with the issues of We of the can't day. get home insurance in Florida. He receives a question about the parental rights and education law and then immediately pivots to inflation and high gas prices and somehow pins it on Ron DeSantis, the governor of Florida. And here's where this backfires spectacularly and once again shows the utter incompetence of this administration. 
What is Pete Buttigieg's job? What is his title in this White House? Secretary of Transportation. Hmm. I seem to think the Secretary of Transportation is kind of the guy who's in charge of tackling issues when it comes to the supply chain, which is of course related to higher gas prices and inflation. I'm pretty sure Ron DeSantis isn't the person who needs to be doing something about inflation and high gas prices. That's Pete Booty butt cheeks. That's literally his job. And I find it really interesting because a couple months ago when the Los Angeles port was completely clogged up and they couldn't get people to work at the port declog the supply chain, who stepped in once again? Florida Governor Ron DeSantis who called on cargo ships to make their way to the state of Florida, which is, by the way, something he's still doing. Here's a release on FloridaGovernor.com on Ron DeSantis' website. Governor Ron DeSantis announces shipping company shifting operations from backlogged California port to Jack's port. So it seems as though Ron DeSantis is actually the only one actually doing something to combat inflation and supply chain woes. I mean, talk about clueless. Oh, and speaking of clueless and speaking of Pete Buttigieg's incompetence, watch. Pete Buttigieg is shocked to hear that black voters feel that Democrats don't keep their promises. You, you do realize, Pete, um, a lot of black people feel like Democrats have kept no promises since they've been in since they've been in office. Really? Yes. We, Reverend Island said that a million times. I'm sure he'll be I mean, pressing you about okay. that tomorrow. <laughs> uh, I, look, I get it. Incompetent, clueless, out of touch, living on a different planet in an alternate reality. These Democrats have absolutely no idea what they're doing, what they're talking about. They are utterly unqualified for the positions they're in, period. That's what I got for you guys, though. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to leave a like, a comment, subscribe, share it as much as possible. We are still shadow banned by the YouTube algorithm, hidden from non-subscribe viewers. I'm going to get back to work. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.